It was recently confirmed that Atlas are open to having some of their franchises adapted into live action, including Persona. This would be the first live action adaptation of an SMT game since the Devil Summoner show from the 90s. Come on, the stage plays don't count. I feel like this property would be more likely to get adapted in the West than in Japan, if only because you need a real CGI budget and Japanese TV shows have like a fiver to spend on CGI. Now, with how massively popular Persona 5 is, I feel like that being the basis for a live action adaptation is a certainty. Best case scenario, they use the Phantom Thief aesthetic but tell a new story with some nods to the game in costumes, personas or moments like everyone freezing around Joker in Times Square or Piccadilly Circus or something. That and we get a version of Joker who is an actual character and not just a blank slate as every depiction of him thus far has been. But I think it's more likely we'll get a straight adaptation of P5 just set in another country. And I worry about how that would be handled and not just because western live action adaptations of Japanese media have pretty much never resulted in anything good outside of Sonic and Detective Pikachu. But even if it's faithful, will it really be faithful? Let me explain! There is a difference between adapting the letter of a work and adapting the spirit of a work. The former is maintaining aspects of the source material as is. For instance, Antakamaki can be brought over easily, blonde white girl with foreign blood. Simple, right? Well, no. Anne is a blonde white girl in Japan. That plays a big part in her social isolation and the expectations her classmates have of her. Blonde white girls are not isolated from their peers for being blonde white girls in the West. With all the Hashino Persona games, and especially Persona 5, being as critical of modern society as they are, Anne's story has the subtext of racism, even if it's not explored to the same extent, say, sexual abuse is. So, I would argue that keeping Anne blonde and white in a Western setting is inaccurate to the source material and would need to be changed to a race that modern Western society is more likely to other the way foreigners at large can be treated in Japan. An Anne of, say, Muslim descent is therefore more faithful than adapting her visual form directly from the game. And race itself is bound to be a major talking point here, given how much more prominent race is in the West than in Japan, especially in recent years. And this isn't inherently a bad thing. After all, Persona 5 was written as a critique of Japanese societal ills. Lots of it carries over to a global culture, like abuse of teachers, art theft, exploitation of the poor and vulnerable, but the story is about Japan. An adaptation set elsewhere should gear the ills being discussed more towards what is prominent in that nation, and countries with less homogenous racial identities should tackle this issue. But then there's the subject of subtlety. While very few of the societal critiques in Persona can realistically be described as subtle, Western adaptations of Japanese media, particularly when adapted by America, tend to strip away all the subtlety to make sure even Cletus from the incest farm in Kentucky can understand what's being said by the story. And I don't think much is as off-putting to me as when a story is very unsubtle about a topic like racism or sexism. We've all seen this CW tier writing before, and I don't think many people would doubt that a Western Persona adaptation would try to tackle these topics and completely fuck it up by talking totally lacking any sort of subtlety or nuance. And each member of the team would naturally be race changed to suit these themes, and there is obviously potential there. I think most people would likely predict, not agree with, predict, that Ben would be white because he's the protagonist, Reggie would be black because he's the aggressive comedy sidekick from a broken home, Anna would be the ditzy blonde, Yusuke would remain Japanese because he has so much Japanese influence in his aesthetic and character that making him anything else would feel unfaithful, Mackenzie would be Asian too because of the crushing familial expectations placed upon her, which has become a popular talking point in animated films recently, Tabitha would be black because Reggie redheads are almost always recast as black, even though her hair is actually only dyed orange, and Harriet and Gordon would be white because of the privilege their respective fathers have, and these kinds of stories seem to think only white people have money and power. Agree or not, you can at least see the thought processes that would lead to this, right? And again, there is potential here, like Reggie's abusive and or absent father. I believe absentee fathers are a major problem in certain black communities, so there could be a genuinely heartfelt story to tell there. But then we have the lack of subtlety rearing its ugly head again. Would Reggie here be aggressive or have a broken leg due to his home and school life? Or because of police brutality? If Anne was non-white, how much overt racist language would she face? How many times would the phrase white privilege be uttered unironically in regards to Harriet and her father? Or from the Phantom Thieves in regards to Gordon and his father? How much overt sexism would Sky face at work? What horrible legislation would the Sun Confidant have supported in his right-wing youth? Some of this is already there in the game text, yes, but do you actually trust a Western writer to keep it in their pants when they realise they have an opportunity to seem woke by discussing these topics so overtly? I sure as hell don't. And then there's the totally new additions, like you know at least one of the main cast will be gay, probably Anne because it's the most uninspired choice. I doubt Ben and Gordon would be a thing because I don't see a Western writer having Gordon be forgiven or sympathised with the way the Japanese writing does. And if the CW made it, half of them would be gay because I'm fairly certain there are more gay people in CW shows than there are in real life. And God help us if they ever get their grubby hands on Persona 4, I mean Jesus, can you imagine? That got a little heavy there, so let's try and discuss something a little lighter to close off this incredibly pessimistic, but also realistic, view on this topic. 
You may have noticed I used Western names for the characters there, names I chose specifically because they sound similar to the Japanese names. Technically, this would be unfaithful as well, since many of the names were chosen based on real people or famous fictional characters. For example, Sakamoto Ryuji derives from Sakamoto Ryoma, a famous samurai rebel from the twilight years of the Tokugawa shogunate. Kawakami Sadayo derives from a famous geisha and actress from the same era, Kawakami Sadayako. Akechi Goro derives from the Japanese Sherlock Holmes, Akechi Kogoro, and his surname possibly relates to Akechi Mitsuhide as a hint towards him being the traitor. These names hold significance, so simply choosing names that are similar to them may work for illustrative purposes, but can be argued to be less faithful due to lacking that significance. Maybe Yuji should be named William as a nod to Captain Kidd and Billy the Kid to maintain the reference to a culturally significant historical rebel. Maybe instead of Sadie or something, Sadio should be named after Lena Horne, an actress who was blacklisted during the Red Scare for her political activism. Maybe Akechi's name should be Conan Fawkes as a nod to Arthur Conan Doyle and Guy Fawkes. You know, something along those lines to maintain the significance and references of the names. Adapting a work into another culture has a lot of potential, especially when the story was originally about the culture it was set in. Done poorly, as most of us expect it to be, it's awful. But if the people making it understand and respect both cultures and the significance behind the details of the original, you could get a genuinely great reimagining of the work that can stand alongside the original as a companion piece of sorts. Really, that applies to any form of adaptation. Thus, one could argue this is part of why the Persona 5 anime didn't work. And yeah, I should really get back to working on the Persona 5 video, eh? If you liked this video, why not subscribe and support me on Patreon like these fine people here? If not, then make sure to share it with your enemies so they can suffer along with you. Today's recommended video is Persona 3, How the Manga Ruined Everything by Ninja Mushi. Because Persona's history of subpar adaptations began long before the idea of a live action version was ever floated around. Lena Horne, an actress who was blacklisted during the Red Scare for her political activism. Activision.